Men. Around the world today, groups of parents and families were on a mission to raise awareness about autism. The numbers are staggering. One in every 150 kids diagnosed with that disorder. In Oklahoma, when you hear about autism, most of the media coverage centers around the Capitol and the battle over Nick's law. So Ernie Paulson took our mobile newsroom to Nick's home today. He joins us live with more about the boy the bill is named after. Ernie. Well, Kevin, it's been a while since we put a face to Nick's law. We wanted to see how he was doing and talk to his father, who continues to champion the cause for his son and every other child and family in Oklahoma fighting autism. 11-year-old Nick Rohde was diagnosed with autism at age four, but at around two and a half years old. And he hit a wall because he stopped developing. Wayne Rohde says his son's autism was severe, which he admits can be challenging. It's extremely difficult. You can't even escape this for 10, 15 minutes because you're living it. For the past seven years, Nick's been receiving behavioral treatment and therapy, which he now gets 40 hours a week. The out-of-pocket cost, anywhere from 3500 to 5000 a month. There is no state assistance. That's where Nick's law comes in. It would require private health insurers to cover the diagnosis and treatment of autism. An estimated 400 kids in Oklahoma are diagnosed with autism every year. The state has got to recognize that we have an epidemic here, and other states have. Eight states have already passed similar legislation. About two dozen are currently considering it. As for Oklahoma, this is the second straight year Nick's law has failed to pass. We approach this as a bipartisan approach. But earlier this year, the bill was killed in a House committee, right down party lines. Democrats voting for it, Republicans against. They brought it into a political game, and they forgot what it's all about. It's these children back here that are suffering, that need this, uh, these treatments and therapies to become self-sufficient. Opponents of Nick's law say it would increase insurance premiums for everybody. As to how much, that debate continues, while Nick continues to make strides. Good job. Give me a high five. High five. Yeah. We see him now where he's sitting at the table eating by himself. We're trying to get him to be as self-sufficient as possible. Wayne says Nick likes playing with his twin brother Austin, going to the zoo, and has become very loving. If we didn't have those treatments or therapies, he would just, he would be someone locked into autism, the iron claws of autism, and be lost forever. Some people say, well, some of these kids are just going to be institutionalized. And I keep saying, well, the only institution my son's ever going to be in is Harvard. There's a bill in the state legislature right now that's geared to increase the number of behavioral therapists to help treat those with autism here in Oklahoma. It has passed the House and is currently on the Senate floor. As for Nick's law, Wayne says as it stands now, it cannot be heard again until 2011. Now, first weather.